What's going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the insane Collingwood St. Kilda game. Let's get into it. So before we jump into it, a quick thing right off the bat. I've been lucky enough to be teaming up with Footy Live this season. One of my favorite football apps, if not my favorite um, football app. I've been using it well before 2019 when I started the uh, Swoop Luke channel. I never thought I'd be in this position where you know we're teaming up and um, all my scores, all the uh, all these videos will be sponsored by them. All the uh, posts on my Instagram that show scores and, and stats and stuff like that is with them as well, the match roundups and stuff like that. So look, this is what the app does. I absolutely love it. I use it for the EPL as well. They have a whole slurry of different sort of sports that you can go to, but of course this one is for the Footy Live app. Go to the App Store, wherever your App Store is, download it, and um, yeah, that, that's it's amazing. It's not going to do, it's not a paid sponsorship, it's just because I love the app, and they love me seemingly, that we're just working together, and it's just a little bit of fun. So yeah, download the app when you get the chance. But now, let's get into this Collingwood St. Kilda review. Honestly, I thought we were done with close games, and we kind of were done with close games. That... Last, what, minute and a half where they kicked three goals, and I thought, far out. Uh, here we go. I was watching it with my Uncle Mario, who's been on the channel. He was on my live yesterday as well. Big St. Kilda fan, obviously. We were 20-something points up, and I was thinking, bloody hell, you know, this is uh, a week after Easter. Not even Jesus Christ could uh, uh, save the St. Kilda Football Club right now, because obviously they're the Saints and stuff like that. And then I spoke too soon because they kicked three bang fire goals and then they get the ball back into their forward line a goal would have drawn the game and i wasn't in for couldn't be bothered with another draw let me tell you against st kilda no less but um we ended up winning that game those last couple of goals i don't think do the game just justice a six point win doesn't do the game justice i think that sort of 20 point margin that we had or was about 24 point margin that we had i think that would have been about right but you know collingwood sort of it was, it's weird for a Collingwood team under Craig McCray to kind of drop their heads a little bit. Not drop their heads, just kind of like calm down and, and think that the win was already ours with a minute and a half left. Because we know, if as well as anyone in this league, probably better than anyone in this league, that you have to play right until the final siren because anything can happen. This game was touted as match of the round. It was touted as probably match of the season, first versus third, an undefeated St. Kilda side, ending uh, gather round as well. And I thought this match was going to be huge. And, you know, it was. It was, it was a sellout, of course. Um, St. Kilda undefeated. Collingwood coming off that Brisbane loss. And we needed, uh, like, we or not needed, we, we wanted to prove a point that that Brisbane loss was just kind of, because we went up to Brisbane and Brisbane do that to teams at the Gabba, right? So... We know we're going up against Ross Lyon football, and Ross Lyon loves to defend, but also he's added that attacking flair to the Saints. And it was pretty much both of our, you could see both of our game plans working out where we'd push hard, they'd get one over the top, um, and then it would be the opposite. And we would uh, try and capitalize on the Saints' turnover. They'd go into the middle, we'd cut them off. Darcy Moore, Isaac Quainor, and Nathan Murphy had 30 intercept possessions between them. That is crazy crazy good but still crazy the craziest thing though about this game besides those intercept possessions was that there was so many turnovers i think for both teams there was over 80 clangers um for both for both teams which is uh, i don't know what the league average is but that has to be high that was absolutely nuts it was just between the arcs it was just getting turned over turned over turned over turned over st kilda were handing us this game on a silver platter um, and just we weren't taking our opportunities, which is classic for a Collingwood side. We'd kick more points than, than goals again, because, again, classic Collingwood side uh, recently, in recent weeks. But it was a very... It was exciting games at, at, at parts, but for, 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 for most of the game, it was just... It was frustrating. It was annoying. You've got to win these sort of games, and we'll talk about the injuries and stuff a bit later. You've got to win these sort of games, much like the Richmond game. We got the four points. Oh, four and one to start the season. So we went into this game, obviously, with no Ruckman going up against Rowan Marshall. So Billy Franton played uh, pretty much most of the game in the Ruck. We didn't really need him um, down back because they, they didn't have any sort of really big forwards. So Darcy Moore could sort of cut them off. We also went into this game without Jordan Dugowie, who was a laid out with Gastro that was been ripping through... Um, the, the football club since they landed in Adelaide, Craig McRae had gotten a couple of other players, Will Hoskin Elliott and stuff like that. And then 
at the end of the first quarter, we lose Dan McStay. He gets subbed out with a finger tendon. It could be six to eight weeks for him to come back, which is just... We, we, we don't have any more big men. We, we don't have any more big men playing. Thankfully, Kruger returned in the VFL. Well, again, we'll talk a little bit about that later. And then in the fourth quarter, we lose Nathan Murphy to a concussion, and he won't be playing next week against um, Essendon on Anzac Day. He got hit by uh, Kamenidi. Kamenidi's looking at a four-week suspension or, or, or probably more from the tribunal. So, oh, injuries galore at Collingwood, but Craig McRae said it best where injuries happen, right? Injuries happen. We're not the only team. Richmond are going through it. St. Kilda are definitely going through it. I hate to say it, but even Carlton are going through it. Just a lot of teams are going through it, right? Injuries happen. Unfortunate that they do happen. They happen. We grounded this win out um, on the road as well, gather round, and that's all you want. The four points in the end. Doesn't matter how you get them, as long as you get them. And we will assess, we will lick our wounds and assess it um, going forward. The fourth quarter was obviously our best quarter. Uh, we're just kicking a, a slurry or a bunch of goals, uh, quick fire in that last quarter. You thought, okay, we're gonna stroll out to a 30, 40, not maybe not 40, but maybe a, a, a 30 sort of point lead. And then we know what happened in the last minute or so. So that's why I say like, we were playing better football than the Saints the whole game. Um, and just our turnovers were, were hurting us. We remember that St. Kilda kicked over 70 points from Gold Coast turnovers last week. So. Uh, they're a very good sort of uh, turnover or points from turnover team. We're a very good uh, points from stoppage team, which we were getting uh, against the Saints as well. And, and I just got to shout out Billy Frampton because he did as best as he could in the ruck against Marshall, who who's a good ruckman and, and just a ruckman. Frampton's not a ruck, um, so that, that really helped. It was Jack Ginevan's first game back from his suspension, and he was a... Pretty, pretty shaky for the first few quarters, maybe for the first three quarters. Really lit it up in the fourth with that uh, amazing goal set up by Bobbly Dazzler Thrillhouse. Uh, the guy with three nicknames. I've given him the Thrillhouse nickname. I don't care if you don't like it. I love it for some reason. Uh, kicked that goal and he was pumped about it. He... Um, he cut off a he cut off a St Kilda mark and then he set up a Jamie Elliott goal in that last quarter. Did a little bit of uh, exciting things and those are the strings that he has to add to his boat. That more defensive sort of pressure, that uh, you know that just that defensive forward that we see Bobby do, that we see Bo do. Um, he just has to show a little bit more. And I get it. His first game back in the, in the in the seniors after that long ass suspension. Hadn't played in the seniors since September last year, so that's over 200 days. So he's a little bit rusty. I get it. Um, but he showed enough to obviously stay in the team, and we need him. He can do things that our other forwards can't do, um, and he's just an excitement machine, and he really boosts uh, everyone in the team around him. I could make a 15-minute video about Nick Dacos, but um, that's not this video. But I did want to, to shout him out. 42 possessions, uh, just immense. You know, people say contested possessions, blah, 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 blah. Mate, you wouldn't drive your Porsche through Broad Meadows, right? So why would you put Nick Dacos in an underpacks? I want him kicking out. I want him um, hitting targets uh, on, on a 30 degree kick with hands tied behind his back. You know, that's what I want to see from Nick Dacos. I couldn't give a stuff if he isn't getting one contested possession a game. If he's getting 40 and going at 85% and having six inside 50s, that's all I want from this kid. This 19, 20 year old kid, right? Absolutely crazy. Then Josh Dacos, uh, 30 or something disposal or, or high 20s and, and getting clearances and doing what Josh Dacos does best. It was just a really good game from the Dacos brothers. Then you got Tom Mitchell, Taylor Adams, Scott Penabry, all leading our tackles, all leading our um, clearances as well. So those guys, those, those old heads um, leading the kids on and you know, Tom Mitchell has just been recruited this season. Billy Franson, Bobby, uh, Bobby Dazzler, Thrillhouse kicked three goals. Maya Check after McStay went down, just kept doing Maya Check things, kept doing what Maya Check does, and we absolutely love him for it. I could go on. That wasn't a, a, a sort of bad game from anybody um, in this team. Tom Wilson was a little bit quiet, um, you know, when he got subbed on for McStay. We'll talk about it a little bit more about um, that, that sort of stuff in, in the preview for the next game. But um, other than that, everyone had an absolutely fantastic game. Now, what can we sort of learn from this game and, and what does it mean going forward? Well, it means that we're sitting 4-1 and one to start the season. Um, obviously, the only loss coming against Brisbane. We're sitting third on the ladder or equal first, but third because of our uh, percentage. Uh, St. Kilda, Essendon, and then us. So that's a really good start to the season. I said either 3-2 or 4-1 and one, uh, would be a perfect start to the season, and, and that's what it is. It's a long season. We're not even a quarter of the way through it. Um, yet we're probably about 20% uh, of the way 
through this season. So still a long way to go, but it's puts us in a very good uh, standing. We're playing very good football. We've got a nice percentage. And look, you want to to, to, to be the best, you've got to beat the best. St. Kilda weren't 5-0, and uh, sorry, weren't 4-0 and for no reason. They're a really good football side, what Ross has been able to do, so credit to them. Um, we went over there to Adelaide, put on a little bit of a show and beat them. We need to start sort of beating these um, these teams that are sitting around where we are. So, you know, that goes for Essendon, that goes for Adelaide. It's not about just beating um, Geelong's or the Richmond's now. we got to start putting our foot down to all these teams. What it does mean for us going forward is that we still have a accuracy problem, right? We still are going inside 50 so many times and we still have, you know, just this absolutely shit house um, accuracy, absolutely just crap. Um, kicking more points, it's it's bad football. Kicking more points than, than goals. I don't have to tell you this. Um, this is not groundbreaking stuff. Kicking more goals wins you uh, more matches and gets you more percentage and, and stuff like that. It's not groundbreaking stuff, but I would just love to see more reward for effort. And I know, you know, Craig McRae is probably going to be pushing this onto all of the guys as well. Just more reward for effort. Like I said before, St. Kilda handed up this, this game on a silver platter. We just didn't take our chances. Yes, we won. Should have been by more because we were playing really good football. Just that that mid-forward connection wasn't happening. And I understand no Mason Cox, no Darcy Cameron in there, no McStay now. you got Will Hoskin Elliott playing tall. you got Jamie Elliott playing tall. you got Majek getting ripped on by three defenders. Uh, and then you got your Smalls bringing it down for the guys. So I understand that it's a little bit different, but... We, that's why. That's why. Once it's in there, you just have to take your chances. And if you got a set shot, you just got to go back and kick them. Also coming out of that game now is Taylor Adams's suspension. So going into the Essendon game, we have to make three force changes: Nathan Murphy with the concussion, Dan McStay, and then Taylor Adams. We probably will contest that Taylor Adams at the, at the tribunal. Zach Merritt is getting his uh, sling tackle contested uh, to to try and play Anzac Day. Collingwood don't usually contest stuff at the tribunal. I can't remember the last time we did. I'll leave it in the comments if you know. But I think we will do this one because we need everyone that we can get because we are just running thin on, on personnel. But if Taylor Adams doesn't come up and, and we don't contest or whatever, he still gets that week, I think it's time for Finn McRae. I'll talk a little bit more about, about that in the preview. And then I think Nathan Kruger definitely comes in as well. But again, we'll talk about more of that as that day preview. All in all, I'm just very proud of this team, what we've been able to achieve so far. 4-1, and one, great start. Uh, getting over St. Kilda in the way that we did, even though we played not very good football, it is, is still good. Um, and yeah, just... Oh, I had a heart attack in the end. I literally, I was crapping myself. Call me Jordan Degoe because I was shitting myself because he's you know, got gastro. So yeah, bloody hell. But um, we get the win. We get the four points. That's all that matters. Like I said, as long as you get the four points, doesn't matter how ugly the win is, you need those four points. But anyway, guys, this has just been my quick review of the game. Let me know your thoughts down below. Likes, dislikes, all of them. Let me know your thoughts of the game down below. But until then, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, double shakers. I'll see you later.